Oi, how you doing? It's me again. A couple of days ago, I dropped a video that I thought was pretty cool. In that video, I talked about how to get every single block in 1.17 in survival. However, did you know there are some things in 1.17 that are actually survival off limits? Because there are, for sure. And some of these things are actually pretty big. In today's video, we're going to talk about some updates coming to Minecraft in the 1.17 update that you can only get in creative mode or something like that. The update's getting pretty close now. I have some cool stuff on the way for 1.17. New survival, cool videos, you definitely don't want to miss this, so make sure you subscribe and leave a like if you like this one. Here are some 1.17 things that you can only get in creative mode or something a little different. Some of the things that we're going to talk about today are going to be a little bit smaller, like this first one. First up, we have a game rule. This game rule, technically, you, you could technically use it in survival mode, I guess. The game rule is game rule freeze damage. If you turn it to true, you'll take freeze damage. If you turn it to false, you won't take freeze damage. Now, for sure, this is definitely going to be more of like a 1.18 thing because Powder Snow is probably going to end up being pretty rare in 1.17. But with the game rule turned on, check this out. I'm freezing and I'm getting colder and colder. Now I have the frozen hearts and I should be taking damage, but I'm not because I turned freeze damage off. The Skulk Sensor is definitely one of the biggest Caves and Cliffs update features. The thing is gigantic, like the possibilities are endless here. However, if we search it in the creative inventory, it's not even there. The Skulk Sensor is technically coming to Minecraft in 1.17. However, if you want to get it, you're going to need to use the command, the give command. If you're on better edition though, uh, you're going to have to wait even longer because the Skulk Sensor is just completely not in the update at all. So the Skulk Sensor is a really cool feature, but there's a lot to it, which means this thing isn't finished. You won't be able to find this thing generating anywhere, and you won't be able to craft it either. Once this thing officially makes it into the game in 1.18, it's, it's going to be completely different. It's a literal game changer. With this Skulk Sensor, you'll be able to make motion sensor doors. You could hook a comparator up to this thing and like sort the signals that it's detecting. You could use wool occlusion to make like a silence zone so I'm not seen anywhere. Or you could use it to like sense mob movement in an area. The Skulk Sensor is truly insane. It's one of the most advanced redstone components to come to the game in years, maybe ever. But in 1.17, it's behind commands only. Huge shout out to our wiki, the Minecraft wiki for this next one. Minecraft 1.17 brings a ton of brand new tags to the game. Now I have to be honest, I'm not much of like a technical person. I mean, I like redstone and stuff like that, but all of the commands for like controlling things, yeah, it's not exactly my thing. But check this out, everything that you're seeing on screen right now, scrolling through, all of these things are new tags coming to the game in the 1.17 update. Now most of these things have to do with new blocks, but some of them don't. Like I said, I'm not the biggest technical person, and if you're not, these are probably things that you will never end up using. But if you do end up using these, most likely it's going to be in creative mode with like a command block or some kind of command summoning in something, setting something. Maybe you're a data pack creator and you're using these things. I have no clue. These new tags coming to the game in 1.17 are going to allow data pack and mod creators to do even more. Or if you're just into the technical stuff, they're going to allow you to summon in something really weird, like a diamond sword with a fox food tag. All right, so technically speaking, you could experience this next one in survival mode, but you're most likely going to end up checking it out in creative mode because it makes a whole lot more sense. In the next update, we have a brand new single biome world type. 1.17 doesn't really change any significant cave generation at all. I mean, it adds geodes and deep slate patches, but no new cave biomes or big caves or anything like that. But if you create a single biome world with lush caves, you could actually find the lush caves in 1.17. If you end up doing this and go into the world and go under the ground, oh man, things look so good. Like the lush caves biome is just a, such a cool looking biome. These things are going to generate everywhere under the ground, including in dungeons and mine shafts. It's kind of crazy. There's no new gigantic caves or anything like that, but it's lush caves everywhere. You could technically play survival in this world, but this is what the experience is going to be like. Like right here, gigantic flat world. There are azalea trees, so you have oak wood in here. Uh, but that's literally it. You're going to miss out on so many different blocks, so many wood types, so many biomes, mobs. Uh, look at this place. It's literally empty. Yeah, you're missing everything. It's definitely not exactly the best survival experience. Redstone can be pretty divisive. Some people hate it, will never touch it. Other people think it's the best thing in the world. If you play creative mode and you build redstone contraptions a lot, this is the update for you. This is it. Look at the redstone tab. It's so much easier to use. This tab has been completely reorganized, finally, in terms of prioritization. So redstone dust, yep, you use that a lot. So it's going to be up at the front. These things, the components, these are pretty frequently used, so they're there. And then if you need like a specific door or a gate type or something like that, they're now pushed down to the bottom. Now, in general, the whole creative inventory definitely needs an overhaul. There are just too many blocks, and it's like so chaotic in here. It does not make any sense at all, but it's a start. At least the redstone tab is, is a little bit better, I, get, I guess. Look at this field. That's a pretty plain field, right? Well, that's where you're wrong. Look at the field now. Nighttime, and it's glowing. How is it done if there's nothing in the field? Well, it's actually pretty simple, you see. I'm doing this with commands, but not really just commands. It's actually an item. 
1.17 adds a brand new light item to Java. So if I use the command, I get this item right here. It looks like a light bulb with a number by it. If I place it down, it's light. It's literally light. It has this cool shining texture that you can only see if you're near it and if you're holding the light block at the same time. Like, check this out. I'm not holding the light block anymore and it's invisible. Then I'm holding the light block and you can see the texture again. Kind of like the barrier block. So it's an essentially invisible light source with a light level of 15 or one two three four five yeah it has every single light option in the game other than zero so if you need to set up light in an area in creative mode maybe you're doing like a big fancy castle and you don't really want to use torches or lanterns this is the block this is the one for you the light block actually isn't like a new original feature or anything like that it's actually been on minecraft bedrock edition for a long time on bedrock it's also creative only because i mean it's a literal invisible light source so probably doesn't make sense in survival but it was over there first something like this would be amazing in survival mind it would be really really cool but at the same time how would you do that i mean invisibility potion with a sea lantern maybe or something like that but then the whole light toggling thing yeah that's pretty tricky to do if you're a map maker though or a creative builder you're gonna love this thing it's gonna be really really useful if you've ever had a server managed the server or even played on the server you know how annoying sleeping can be like you have to get everybody to sleep or everybody else has to leave the server and one person has to sleep well uh, in 1.17, finally, we have a solution to that. There's a brand new game rule coming to the game that deals with sleeping. So this is the game rule that does it all. Game rule, player's sleeping percentage. It's a long one. This game rule controls the percentage of players that need to sleep to skip the night. If we were to set this value to zero or really any random negative number, could be anything, then only one player needs to sleep to skip the night. If I were trying to do some sort of no sleep challenge mode, you could actually use this command too. If I set the value to over 100, like 150, then 150% of the people on the server would have to sleep, which is impossible, which means the nighttime isn't skippable. The default value for this command is going to be 100. So if you don't want anything to change, it's 100. If you were to set the value anywhere in between 0 and 100, let's say 50, and you have four people online, then only 50% of the people need to sleep. So two people. It's an amazing command. It's something that needed to come to the game for so long. You won't have to use a data pack for one player's sleep anymore. You just run this command one time and you're good. This is a tiny one, a really small one. And it's actually, technically speaking, not even in creative mode. It's in spectator mode. In spectator mode, if you go into lava now in 1.17, you can see, like, your screen isn't just filled up with lava. Like, look at this. The lava is invisible. I can see the blocks behind it. <laughs> uh, not exactly the most game-changing one, but it is new. Unless I'm wrong on this one, which I'm pretty sure I'm not. I checked the wiki. I ran some tests. The spore blossom is actually completely unobtainable in Minecraft 1.17. All of the other lush cave blocks, like the moss block, the drip leaf plant, everything like that, you can get those in 1.17, but for some reason, the spore blossom, it's creative mode only. It doesn't generate anywhere, and there's no way to get it in survival Minecraft. Now, the spore blossom doesn't really do much. It's more of a decorational block. It puts particle effects out into the air, which are amazing, uh, but in terms of function, like, it doesn't give you anything or anything like that. It is really, really cool, though. Like, the vibe in here is completely changed because of these particles. Imagine making, like, a bush maze or some kind of garden or just, like, an underground room or something like that, and then you have the green particles all over the place. Like, it's really, really cool. But unless something changes in between when I make this video, uh, when I release it, and when the update releases, the Spore Blossom is unobtainable in survival Minecraft. Like, not even from the Wandering Trader. You can't buy it. You can't get it. Another one of these ones. Brand new world. Game mode creative. More world options, world type, single biome. Up on the surface of this world type, we basically have something that looks like a plains biome. Like, this is a lot more recognizable. Like, just green grass, we have flowers everywhere, ruined portal over there, which is pretty cool. And if you're looking for more of, like, a normal survival experience, this one might be a little bit better. A lot is going to be missing still, like, no mobs anywhere at all. But flip into spectator mode, under the ground, and we can find dripstone cave generation in the old caves so yeah the new caves are still not here quite yet but we can take a look at what the dripstone caves might kind of look like in 1.18 it's pretty sweet looking like look at the ravine lined with the pointed dripstone it looks like teeth on the wall pretty insane every once in a while if you can find a cave that's big enough which usually is just going to be a ravine you can find one of these gigantic pointed dripstone sculptures like look at that like connecting the ceiling to the floor it's insane there's so much dripstone block sometimes these giant columns of pointed dripstone can get pretty crazy looking too like this is actually two but it almost looks like a giant one with like a hole inside of it if you were into the idea of single biome survival you could technically experience this in survival but it probably wouldn't be very fun at least not long term the bundle is definitely one of those features that people have been asking be added to the game for like a long time. In Minecraft 1.17, it finally makes it into the game, kind of. Uh, if I try this recipe in here though, I'm pretty sure that's the recipe, or it was. 
It's not going to work. Unfortunately, the bundle, just like the skulk sensor, is locked behind the give command. If you want the bundle, you're going to have to at least have access to commands. When I use the give command, I get a bundle, and it's like a normal bundle. Like, I can pick things up with it, which is pretty cool, and I can take things out of it. Yeah, it's, it's a bundle, and it works like a bundle should, but it's one of those features that unfortunately just isn't finished for whatever reason. To be honest, I'm not completely sure if it's fully finished on Java or not. It feels pretty good. I could see it getting changed a little bit more, but the big problem with the bundle it doesn't exist on better editions and um obviously if it's not even there it's not even close to being finished when the bundle was first revealed at minecraft live i was excited like the bundle was really really cool looking this thing is going to help huge time with inventory management especially when exploring like you can put a bunch of random things like flowers random blocks that you picked up saplings inside of the bundle compact it all down to one spot the bundle is a great feature for exploring and would really be nice to have right now but we're gonna have to wait. On the bright side though, with even more development time, maybe even more improvements can be made to the bundle, make it even cooler, uh, or at the least, when the bundle gets added to the game, we will have those new gigantic caves with tons of new things inside of them to be able to actually pick up and put inside of the bundle. 1.17, part one of the Caves and Cliffs update is planned to drop on June 8th. There are so many brand new blocks and things coming to the game in this update. Some of those things you can get in survival, some of them you can't. That's going to do it for today's video. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is definitely the time. Once 1.17 drops, I'll have one singular video going over every single thing in the update, big and small. If you liked today's video, leave a like. Medical Boomstick, Swoopy Louvers, and Noodle Pork. Thank you all so much for the support. I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.